All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Calling together the planning board meeting for October 12, 2022. Just need to read a brief um, statement. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 38, section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you wanna ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure I'll count accuracy. Okay, we'll do a roll call. We have Larry Hassan. Here. James Sweeney. Here. Corita Das. Here. And Tony Gonzalez. Okay. All right. Uh, before we get into the agenda, just want to announce that November's meeting will be held on November 22nd, 2022 at 6 p.m to avoid quorum issues. Okay. Okay. All I right, also we have some continuances. So if you're here for these meetings, just want to announce that they have been continued at the applicant's request. 148 North Montello Street, site plan approval. 1449 Main Street, return to ZBA. 48 North Pearl Street, return to ZBA. 124 Bradley Ave, return to ZBA. 262 Winter Street, 34 Kent Street, Kent Estates, preliminary subdivision. And lastly, Petronelli Way, definitive subdivision. So if you're here for any of those, they have been continued until next month's meeting. Correct, Rob? Correct, on I'm, the 22nd. On the 22nd. Did I miss any, Evan? Nope, that's all of them. Okay. All right. So first um, order of business is to review the acceptance of the minutes from meeting 9122. Motion to accept minutes. Second. second. Okay. Roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Rudy Das. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you. Hey, Evan, do you want to do the ANRs for us, please? Sure. Uh, we don't actually have any ANRs, but we do have some lot releases for Cypress Drive. They're asking for uh, five lot releases, 17, 13, 12, 11, and 6. Uh, Everything is fine with those, so you guys can do your thing. Okay. Can I have motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Roll call, Larry Son. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Rita Das. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Next, Evan. All right. Next, we have a return of return of surety for Curtin Farms. And again, everything for that is good to go. So no issues around that. Okay. So motion. Motion to approve. Um, Second. Okay. Roll call, Larry Son. Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Juan Gonzalez? Yes. All right. All street right. acceptances. All right. The next thing is the uh, street acceptances. We have Dorothy Road and Corolla Road. Um, again, there's not much to do on those. It's favorable or unfavorable. Okay. I'm pretty sure they're all set to go. So. All right. Can I get a motion for Dorothy Road? Mm -hmm. Motion to accept, Dorothy Road. Second. Roll call, Larry Son. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Rita Das. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. And a motion on Corella Road. Motion to accept, Corella Road. Second. Roll call, Larry Son. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Rita Das. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. All right. Any others, Evan? That's everything. Okay. So now we'll get into the agenda for this evening. Um, I announced several that have been continued. So let me just announce what we do, what we will discuss tonight and vote on. 
Um, the permission to return to ZBA, we have 340 and 346 Warren Ave. After that, we have site plan approval for 124 Mainly Street. We have a site plan. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. We have on the agenda site plan approval 716 Belmont Street. Also a site plan approval for 175 Warren Ave. Site, uh, site plan approval for 34 North Pearl Street. Site plan approval for 1159 Main Street. Preliminary subdivision for 20 Winter Street. Okay. All right. Um, we're starting with 340, 346 Warren Ave. Return to ZBA. Applicant is John Andrade with attorney James Burke representing. And hang on, let me start to transfer people. Um, was Councillor Burke one of the ones that he wanted to go to the end? Uh, that was if Scott was going to be late, but it looks like he's here. Scott is so, here, so yes. let me turn Scott. I see Scott there. Uh, promote to panelist. And... Um, I'm looking to see if John Andre is here. And Madam Chair, oh, you guys are together. Yeah. Uh, just as an FYI, um, there are two meetings booked back to back, the planning board and the zoning board. And so uh, the calendar snafu. And so it looks like they are in the GAR room. But uh, uh, before, um, uh, Attorney Burke makes his presentation, um, if he has anything to say. Uh, this is a, a very rare case uh, for a return to ZBA. The applicant actually, um, uh, predating Councillor Burke, submitted the wrong application to the ZBA. And that's why one of the reasons why they were denied. And uh, we think that um, uh, they should be applying for a special permit rather than a variance. And so we're requesting that the board uh, grant them the ability to return to ZBA because of the uh, 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 previous snafu. Okay, well, that should make this short and sweet. Thank you. I think it's an excellent result, obviously. So uh, we request uh, that the board take the recommendation of the planner. Okay, <laughs> any, any questions from the planning board members? Uh, Rob, is this open to public or no? Um, it is open to public. If anybody has anything to say, please raise your hand or use the raise your hand um, function. And Councillor Monticello, I did send you a message in chat if you want to take a look at that first. Um, I see no other hands up at the moment um, unless it's Councillor Monticello wants to speak about this topic. Um, but uh, I, I see no other hands at the moment. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Approve special permit. With right, correct. Motion to approve a special permit. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Rita Das. Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. You're welcome. M Madam Chair, um, I am going to unlock um, Councilor Minicello, uh, who may have a question, um, but he's not responding in the chat. So if you just sure. bear with me, please. Sure. I see his hand raised. Sorry about that. Well, that's okay. No, um, hi there. No, I was not on, on, I'm going to say anything on this matter. It was the, um, it was Pearl Street with regard to the um, right. uh, residential apartment units that I, I would like to speak on when, it, when it's my turn. Is that 34 um, North Pearl Street? Uh, correct. It, 40, 40, 40, 40, 43. 40 oh, but yes, it's, it's continued to the next meeting, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you then. I think I'm going to go have dinner with my uh, wife then. She's going to be happy here uh, that I'm joining oh. her right now. Oh, uh, brother Dan. Dan. Rub it good. in. Thanks a lot. <laughs> lucky lady, lucky you. Good Have luck, everyone. Evening. You guys do a great job for the city. So I, I appreciate what you guys do. It's put in a ton of time, a ton of time. Thank so. you. Have a good night. All right. You too. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.
All right, so we are on 124 Mainly Street, a site plan approval. Applicant is Father Bills and Mainspring. Representative Joyce Consulting Group. Uh, would Joyce please raise your hand? Uh, thank you. And you know what? I need to make some people co-hosts. I apologize for that. I'm going to make Evan a co-host and um, Road a co-host. So if you see people with their hand up faster than I do, And is there anybody else from Joyce Group? Ah, Councillor McCluskey. So, um, uh, Rob, it's my understanding these all went through site plan approval and reviewed and tech review. So, um, yes, ma'am. Uh, these this is the end of the site plan review process. Uh, the sites have been um, fairly well vetted. Hall. Do we have a homeless kid here that's refusing to leave the building? It's closed. Oops. He's got, he's got, he's got the first floor. Uh, Thank you, Scott. Uh, Go ahead, Rob. I will, I will move Scott out of there. Sorry about that. Um, uh, so we have uh, vetted these fairly well, and uh, we're at the end of the process. And so uh, I know we had a lot on our agenda tonight, so I'm hoping that the applicants can be thorough but brief um, so that the board can move on. Rob, uh, I'll be as brief as possible. Uh, uh, Attorney John McCluskey representing uh, Father Bills, and um, I, I basically would defer to the experts uh, in, in this case uh, from Joyce Consulting, but uh, this is going to be a, a wonderful uh, new project for Father Bills, providing uh, emergency care, immediate overnight care, health services, and also a component of uh, uh, formerly homeless people who will have an apartment uh, to live in and to begin to get back. <clears throat> and so with that, I would defer to uh, Joyce Consulting and uh, let them walk you through uh, what you'd like to hear and, and what they would think would be highlights this evening. Hi. Um, uh, if we could just oh. promote Emily Rothschild and uh, Bill Barrett as well, they're they're also part of the project team. Uh, that that costs extra. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll try to do it myself. Then we'll see how it goes. Emily um, Rothschild, I see her. Yep. Okay. And Bill Barrett. So we'd be putting the plan up. Yeah, oh. let me let me do that now. Um, there we go. So you guys don't have to look at me all night. Um, and I just not, noticed Brockton Cable Access, and I promoted them. Okay. So um, they can record. Sounds good. Are we good to go? Yes. All right. Uh, so I'm Michael Joyce with Joyce Consulting Group, the civil engineers for the project. Uh, the pro proposed projects at 124 Manley Street, which is the old Army Reserve Center on uh, Manley Street. It's a, approximately a three acre parcel. I can see it highlighted in yellow on the screen here. Um, it's directly abutted by the, the Veterans um, Medical Center and then commercial properties on, on either side. Um, so currently existing, there is a 14,000 square foot um, Army Reserve building, brick building, uh, with, with parking around it. Um, it's accessed by a driveway on Manly Street. And then the whole site kind of slopes from the rear towards Manly Street. Uh, the driveway rises up about seven, eight feet. Then the rest of the site rises up one to two feet from the driveway back to the rear. Um, currently, there's no stormwater on site. Um, there is an existing garage associated with the, the building, a detached garage, uh, and all the sewer and the sewer and water utilities currently come from the VA hospital pr uh, property because it was all federal government property. Um, so we will be rectifying that as I'll speak to later. Um, 
in the presentation. So that's kind of the, the existing site. Uh, here's just the existing conditions plan, giving you an idea. Is Manly Street, the uh, driveway is accessed from Manly Street. There's parking in the rear. Uh, there's existing Army Reserve Center building and then the garage to the rear as well. So what the applicant's proposing to do is to keep the existing uh, 14,000 square foot building and, and renovate it, then add a 7,000, approximately 7,700 square foot addition to the rear of the property. Um, the existing building would remain more or less the same and the proposed addition uh, would be a three-story uh, building with 32 units of um, permanent supportive housing. So the, the gray addition in the rear would be permanent supportive housing, 32 units of studios, uh, studio apartments, and the front would be a housing resource center. Uh, we, we'd maintain the same access, uh, widening the driveway slightly. We've also reconfigured the parking area so that it allows for um, a fire truck to re turn around within the site and exit. It's uh, kind of the, the site layout, those also accessible uh, sidewalks throughout throughout the property. In, in total, we'd have a proposed 42 um, parking spaces in, in this layout. Uh, we'd actually be regaining about 6,000 square feet of, of green space with this uh, proposal, taking up some of the, the asphalt in the rear here. Uh, as mentioned, uh, currently the, the sewer comes in to the site in this area here, and then also a hydrant is fed from the same location. So this is the Veterans um, Administration Hospital here. Uh, so we'd be revising the utilities to connect to the Manly Street utilities. Um, proposed sewer would come out, proposed water. Um, there'd be one water uh, lateral coming in with domestic and fire services um, served off of that lateral. The existing garage would be remaining. I'm not sure if I've mentioned that before or not. Um, so that's more or less it for the, the utilities. And then we use stormwater, which is where we spent the majority of the technical review time. The technical review, two main things came out, major um, adjustments came out of it. One was the fire, being able to return the fire truck around. So this island was added. Uh, and the other was we we um, expanded upon the stormwater quite significantly. So currently there is no stormwater on the site. Everything sheet flows off and, and goes out to Manly Street. Uh, with our proposal, we'd be collecting all rooftop runoff. Um, the addition would go into a Caltech system of 16 chambers in the rear under the parking lot. And the existing building would go to 16 chambers at the front of the building uh, below the parking area. During large storm events, these would overflow um, to the uh, retention area here. Um, in addition, the driveway runoff is collected by a rain garden that's at the in the center islands, which also overflows to a infil large infiltration area to the side. Um, and ultimately, in large storm events, that would overflow to Manly Street um, as it does the, as the stormwater flows today. So during all the storm events is a, a significant decrease in runoff from the site. Uh, it's definitely an improvement over existing conditions. Um, from a, a stormwater site layout standpoint, that's the, the quick and dirty. Um, I wouldn't say it's quick and dirty, it's pretty, <laughs> pretty in depth. Um, kind of overview of, of what we're proposing to do. Um, Bill Barrett's also here from Elton Hampton, uh, Place Taylor Elton Hampton, if you have any questions on the architectural. Uh, this is just a col colored schematic of the proposed um, proposed work. There are a fair amount of trees on the site um, and we're proposing to keep the majority of those trees and then also supplement with some new dogwoods uh, and some new sh shrubs uh, along the faces of the buildings. Right now, the existing shrubs are fairly overgrown, so those will be removed and replaced with um, appropriate shrubbery. So oh. if you'd like to hear from Bill Barrett, he's more than happy to present or um, whatever you no, I, I think this is a, a great plan and, and, and much needed plan. Uh, if you're finished with your presentation, I can open it up to the planning board members for any questions. Sure. 
Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, um, the front area, I mean, just really thinking about visibility from Manly Street. Uh, what do we have, a sidewalk and a few trees? And what are, uh, are those dogwood trees that are kind of in the entryway? Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, so the 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 dark green trees are existing. The light pink are uh, the new dog, proposed dogwood trees. Uh, currently, um, let's see, if you, would you like to see a street view? I have that. Absolutely, yeah. Um, let's see if I can find that here. So this is kind of, this is the driveway here, um, existing flagpole. Now, these trees are there. Uh, there are Michael. One, oh, yep. Your screen has not changed. <laughs> well, thank you. Let me. And how about so now? If if it's a different document, oh, Maybe. there we go. All right. So so this is the um, existing site. Like like I said, the the shrubs along the building are overgrown, so those will be removed. Uh, we're actually. Um, I believe removing the chain link fence along the front of the building, it will be staying in the, uh, to kind of, um, so I think it's being removed except for along the edges of the building. Um, and then these trees will be cleaned up, but they, they won't be removed. There's one or two, I don't know if we can see them here, but they'll be removed because they are dead. Um, outside of that, the area will be cleaned up. And like I said, the driveway will be in the same same location. Um, I don't know if that helps answer your question. Yeah, a, a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess it does. Okay. Thank you. Other questions from the planning board? So the chain, um, talking about, you talked about the front side chain link. What about the rear side? Are so they gonna stay? Yeah, the the rear will remove uh, will remain. Um, I don't know if you can. The majority of the uh, chain link fence is actually in pretty good condi condition. Um, there is, I believe, barbed wire at the top of it, and that will be removed. So it will just be chain link fence. It won't be, um, you know, the you can kind of see the the barbed wire here. That that'll be removed, but the chain link fence along the edges of the site will remain. Um, just, just to provide separation between the properties. Okay. And you showed a rendering uh, with the green spaces and uh, you know building. So I, I was just uh, looking at your C1. Uh, C, plan it is. C, yeah, C1.0 plan. So, I'm a little confused. What happening in the back? Like uh, you say the asphalt, and then you are showing green space over there. Yeah. So is this the is this the, the sheet here? Yeah. Um, let me just get the view. Okay. So this green area here, that's where there's existing parking area, and, and that will be basically reclaimed the, the parking area, the asphalt is going to be removed from the, the area in green here. That's going to be replaced with landscape. It was, it was more to show uh, kind of the impervious area that's going to be removed um, on the site. If that's so that this area here. So that'll all be grassed area now. Uh, currently it's asphalt. Oh, okay. Okay, I think that's all for me. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, uh, Michael, would, would you guys be a, opposed to uplighting the dogwoods in a little, you know, a little bit of lighting on the entry side, just possibly for the, the neighborhood? Uh, that I would have to refer to um, April Conley or Emily Rothschild. I don't think that would be an issue. But Yeah, no, I, I think if there was a um, if there was enhanced lighting we could put in the front, um, certainly would be open to that. All right, thank, thank you, April. How are you, by the way? <laughs> yeah, good. Good to see you, Jimmy. Awesome. Right. Madam Chair, you have questions? questions? Yes, Madam Chair. Maybe Rob can answer this. Um, what is going to happen with the current Main Spring building on Main and Spring now? Is that going to be closed down, changed? I'm just curious now. Um, once, once this building is open, that building will close, and the city is negotiating a right to acquire the property from Father Bill's Main Spring. That's, that's about all I had for a question. Thank you. All right. Thank you. 
So, uh, is there a motion? Oh, is this open to public? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Well, you're chopping it a bit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if anybody has any questions or comments about this site, um, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. If you hover your mouse over the bottom of the screen, you'll see a small hand that looks like it's up. Um, if you're on a phone, please press star nine and we'll be able to um, turn on your microphone. And at this time, I do not see any hands up, Madam Chair. Okay, so now we'll move on to, is there a motion? Motion to approve with standard conditions. Standard. On the motion, on the motion. Can we, can we add the lighting to that, please? Yeah. Enha enhanced lighting uh, along the bushes in the front. Second. Okay. Roll call, Larry Hassan. Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rudy Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, John Andre, if you are listening, uh, you have a message in the chat function. So next, uh, we are here listening to site plan approval 716 Belmont Street. The applicant is KFC. The representative is J.K. Holmgren. Uh, good evening, members of the board. Again, Attorney John McCluskey representing DE Foods. Uh, we filed a petition with the Board of Appeals uh, a few months ago uh, for a few items rel relative to this property. Uh, it was a, it's uh, allowed to have a restaurant by right. And um, the special permit that we received was for a couple of minor things, the drive-through and for um, uh, set a, a screenage or, or green space in the front. And um, this is a property of the old producer's dairy or part of it, the old producer's dairy in Brockton. If you, you remember, this is a this was a restaurant for years and years and years and then closed down. It was another restaurant, um, Bickford's, I believe, uh, several years ago. And it's been uh, relatively vacant uh, since that time, uh, owned by uh, Vanessa Gumbert, uh, whose family has owned property in Brockton for many, many years. And now uh, we look forward to having DE Foods uh, uh, introduce their Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, property uh, here. Uh, we anticipate approximately 40 new employees uh, to run the operation many of whom we would anticipate and hope would be Brockton residents. And uh, we have gone through the site plan approval process, the tech review. And uh, I'd like to turn this over to, I see Nicole, uh, who's ready to go and tell you all about the project. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, my name is Nicole Duquette with uh, Greenman Peterson or GPI. Um, also, you'll see Heather Montecup, who is also from GPI. She is our traffic consultant uh, for this project. If there's any questions for DU Foods specifically, we also have Dan Whitney on um, it ha who has joined the meeting, but I don't believe he's appearing as a panelist right now. Um, I, I will search for Dan. Okay. Dan <laughs> Thank hoped, you, Rob. Dan had hoped to remain silent. Uh, yes, he hoped to remain silent, but he is here just in case. Um, so this is our site. Uh, many of you are familiar with, with the site. It is on the southern side of Belmont Street. Uh, you can see the, the McDonald's over here is a bank here, restaurant that I have heard has changed many times, so I'll just say restaurant, uh, and the school uh, driveway is right here. So the site is a 1.1 acre site. However, um, we, or D Foods, is, is only um, working on 
the western side of the lot. Uh, Vanessa would like to retain lease pad number one. We'll say lease pad number one is the eastern side and lease pad number two is the western. Um, this, is, this will be for our development yet to be determined. So we don't have any knowledge on what Vanessa plans to do over there. Uh, we're only coming for before you for a lease pad two. Um, let's move on. The other thing to mention, um, sorry, there we go. The other thing to mention, and, and Heather will get into it a little bit further, is that uh, Belmont Street Recently, uh, DOT did the improvements. Those improvements are in front of this lot too. Uh, but before they did the improvements, they did stub utilities, which I'll go over a little bit in a little bit. So this is our proposed site. Uh, it's a 2,435 square foot building, a KFC building with 26 seats and a drive, a drive through with two lanes. Uh, there's gonna be two menu boards, two lanes to cut down the queue on the property. We do have access from two different locations. We have access from the existing driveway that accesses the, the AutoZone Plaza over to the right here. This is east on our plan, but we'll just say plan right. Um, so the AutoZone Plaza here and the black back plaza uh, in here, there is a 24 foot or 25 foot easement that goes to the back to access the back plaza. So that that access does not have to come through the property that KFC is on. Uh, and then we have a shared driveway between lease pad number one and lease pad two, which is the KFC. We are proposing 15 spaces, including one ADA accessible space on the property. And um, as attorney McCluskey um, said, we did get a special permit from the ZBA uh, for the drive-through and eating and drinking establishment for the drive-through. Moving on to the drainage. So we have even, so the site is currently paved and it sheet blows off the site. We have tried to maintain all of the stormwater on the property. Um, we have catch basins with deep sump, uh, deep sumps and oil water separator hoods around the property. Uh, those go into a hydrodynamic first defense unit that helps separate the oil, continues to separate the oils or floatables and, and debris. Uh, and then that goes into an underground infiltration system located to the back of the property. Um, this, this underground, it's a storm tech system with isolator rows. So these isolator rows further separate sediments and floatables before <clears throat> it goes into the rest of the, the units that infiltrate or recharge the groundwater. We do have um, an emergency overflow just in case we need it for a larger storm events that does go back to the plaza drainage system um, to the south. So um, we have, uh, there will be an easement in place for that connection as well. As far as utilities go, uh, like I said before, Prior to the improvements happening, the DOT improvements happening on Belmont Street, uh, the landlord had requested a water stub and a gas stub be brought onto the property. So what we've done is um, this, these stubs are sufficient size uh, for both pads. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. But one thing we wanted to do is make sure that once lease pad one comes into play and and hopefully KFC is is constructed, that nothing would interrupt the um, operation. So we are proposing to stub over um, a connection for lease pad one for both the water and the gas across the shared driveway and then um, have the gate necessary gate valves or water shutoffs 
to uh, provide the services to KFC. So both water and, and gas come off of um, the mains in Belmont Street. Sewer, there is an existing sewer sub stub from the plaza in the rear. Um, that is an older sewer pipe. Uh, it's a clay pipe. So what we have done is we've uh, proposed to replace that pipe with a new PVC pipe uh, and, and bring it towards our property. And because this is a restaurant, we are required to have a grease, uh, grease trap to, uh, for the kitchen waste. So that is proposed on this plan as well. In electric, we are proposing a new utility pole uh, on the landlord's property, uh, and then we'll bring the services underground. So this pole will be within the line of the existing overhead wires uh, cr from across Belmont Street to the property. Landscaping, it's always much more fun to show the landscaping on the color plan. So landscaping, we did, we do have, um, obviously there's nothing on the site today. So anything shown here is proposed. Uh, we are proposing for trees. We're proposing spring snow crab apples. They're the crab apple tree that does not bear fruit. Um, and then the column in our uh, Sergeant cherry trees as, as well around the prop perimeter of the property. Uh, for shrubs, we are proposing inkberries, rhododendron, and spirea. And then we have some ornamental grasses and uh, daylilies in uh, some of the smaller islands. Um, wanted to mention this, there are, there's currently two signs on the property today. You see this light outline here. That was the old Bickford sign. That will be removed. But there is a sign on the property uh, for the rear plaza. That will stay. But we plan on landscaping around it. The KFC new sign is located here. Um, and that was gone over with the ZBA. And we were able to get a special permit for signage for the building signs and they were aware of the two signs, but this sign is an offsite sign for the back plaza. That being said, um, I'd like to turn it over to Heather to talk a little bit about traffic. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, as Nicole said, I'm Heather Monacup with Greenman Peterson GPI and we are not only the site engineers for the project, but also the traffic engineers. Um, so we did prepare a full traffic impact and access study. It's dated um, July 27, 2022. Um, it is on the state highway. So not only are we required to do it for the city, but we're also required to do it for our mass DOT access permit uh, because we are doing work within the state highway layout. Um, they require an access permit. So we had a meeting with city officials back in um, March to determine a study area. We looked at um, four intersections along Belmont Street, um, including our, our, our site driveway there, uh, Magnolia Ave, uh, Angus Beaton Drive with the plaza, the, the western side of West Street and the Shaw's Plaza. Um, and we also looked at the AutoZone driveway, which is shown plan right here, as well as our proposed driveway um, that splits uh, pad one and pad two there. So we looked at existing conditions, 2022 conditions, public transportation. We did traffic counts in June. We, um, while school was still in session, we took into account the close proximity of the school and extended the hours that we looked at um, from, we looked at 6.30 a.m. to to 9 a.m. And then we looked at 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. And as well, and um, 4 to 6 p.m. on weekdays. And then we also looked at 11 to 2 on Saturday. So we investigated the a.m., the p.m., and Saturday uh, peak hours. Uh, we had COVID adjustment, seasonal adjustment. We looked at collisions. We gathered speed data. And we um, took a look at site distances out there, which do meet the minimum uh, requirements by AASHTO. Um, what, there is um, some site distance restriction from a temporary sign out there, but that uh, is going to be removed. It was just a sign strapped to the uh, existing pylon sign. 
Uh, we looked at future conditions, 2029, we went out seven years, Design Horizon. Uh, so we added historical growth, we added any background developments in the um, area, which includes the Starbucks, which is in the Stop and Shop Plaza, as well as the reoccupancy of the Stop and Shop, because that's vacant today. So we made sure that um, traffic was accounted for in that in a in our future conditions. Um, as Nicole had mentioned, MassDOT is doing some work out there. They just completed, um, well, not just completed, but completed phase two of the project in November of 2018, which puts a moratorium around the frontage, um, along the frontage of the site. Uh, that moratorium is up November 7th, 2023. However, we've been coordinating with DOT all along because the utility stubs were already put into the um, project site when they were doing the work of phase two, they said it was okay to do these modifications in the roadway um, for the driveway as long as it was just a saw cut into the roadway. So they didn't have a problem with that. Um, and phase three is currently in construction right now. They still have some, some things to finish up out there. Um, there is another project along Forest Ave that was um, just mentioned in our traffic study, but that shouldn't impact anything in our area. Uh, the proposed site, obviously nothing is on the site today. Um, the proposed site is expected to bring, um, so there's there's trips that are going to come into the site. And then obviously a site like this pulls a lot of traffic from the roadway. So there's, uh, we call it pass-by trips, people that stop in on their way to somewhere else, either on the on their way home or um, or on their way shopping or something like that. So pass by is 50% or higher on a use like this. So new trips to the area as a result of this project are 55 a.m. new trips, 36 p.m. new trips, and um, 67 new Saturday trips in an hour. Um, once we distribute all that traffic onto the area roadways, um, the increases in vehicular trips are anywhere between five to 34 trips, depending either way on Belmont Street or down West Street. So that's about new one new trip every one minute and 45 seconds to 12 minutes on any of the roadways. Um, the drive through is able to accommodate 13 vehicles, which is enough uh, space based, based on the ITE data that we have for drive throughs for um for chicken restaurants. And uh, we also ran our capacity and queue analysis for the, for the project, again, for submission to MassDOT. Uh, the project was submitted to MassDOT in August. We just recently received our first round of comments from them. And um, they, the, every comment is pretty easy to address. We're working on updating the plans to update them, just small changes that they needed on certain things and details that they wanted to see. However, one um, more major comment that I wanted to bring up tonight was that the main driveway uh, between uh, lease pad one and two, they would like to see that as a right in, right out. As you can imagine, um, they feel that it's a bit close to the traffic signal and would rather see that driveway as a right in, right out. So I will... Um, if I can, Nicole, can you stop sharing the screen? And if I have the ability, I was going to share my screen with, um, let's see, I've got my ID. Let's see, is it sharing? Okay, so um, this is the site layout in black and white. And what we've shown here is what we plan on kind of superimposing onto the driveway. This meets the DOT standards for a right in, right out driveway. So there would be um, an island in the middle separating flow, trying to really restrict those left turns out and the left turns in. So that is a change that we would be making um, to the to the site plan. Um, we still have full access egress over here on this um on the, I guess it's the Western driveway, even though it's on the right of the plan, but um, that does not seem to change. MassDOT hasn't uh, made any comments that, that any access would have to change there. They just like to see this one as a right in, right out. Um, so I'll stop sharing there. Uh, but those are the, that's, that's the summary of the traffic study. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Um... I'm not sure if I missed this piece, but did you or someone address 
the issue with your storing your used oil? Do you mind saying that question again? Did you address um, how you plan on using storing your used oil? Your used oil to your yes. used oil. Oh, <laughs> the for the, the cooking oil. oil. The cooking oil. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hi. Hi. This is Dan Whitney with DE Foods. Um, we will be. Um, we have two tanks. Both of them will be um, uh, enclosed, so there'll be no grease barrel in the parking lot. Um, and uh, that the system is much more, you know, um, uh, appealing. There's no odor. There's no all this. It's, it keeps the place clean. So I think you'll be pleased that we'll have um, uh, two tanks uh, that will be uh, either immediately adjacent to the building or inside, and we will not have anything in the parking lot. Thank you. Dan, Dan could you do us a favor and send us those specifications? Uh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to show it to somebody else too. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, we we have a we use a certain contract a, a company. So I'll just send you what they that what we do, um, uh, Rob. Okay, so that's we, perfect. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, thank you. And I guess there's a water bottle service that is on this property or next to the building. Is there a plan on moving it, or who's going to be responsible for? The water bottle service. So that's not part of this. Um, this that's not part of this plan. Uh, that is owned, I believe, by Vanessa on her, a, a separate lot on sixty-seven dash one, not on sixty-nine, lot sixty-nine. Did you pull that site plan up? Sure can. Or with that survey, because you're referencing two different lots. Yep. So this is the subject lot that, that is colored. Um, and then this is a separate lot, lot 67-1. Oh, crud. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Note the disappointment. <laughs> Adam, sure, if I could. Um, could you just uh, repeat what the utility pole uh, situation is? You have a few that run all the way through the back, I guess, probably towards the high school. Um, yes. Are we cleaning that up? What What's the the situation with that? Those are actually both um, on the lot sixty seven dash one, so we can't touch them. Um, they're not part of the lease area. Okay. So that's why we've put a pole in line. Okay. With that, once lease pad one, if when Vanessa goes to do lease pad one she's going to need to move those utility poles um, okay. because that would hinder her development. Okay. That would be good to see. Thank you. Okay. Other questions from board members? Yeah, I have a question. It's regarding the grease trap. Um, so Nicole, you showed a grease trap uh, during showing the floor, uh, during show, uh, showing the site plan, right? And Daniel, you said there will be two grease trap, one inside and other outside. Okay. So the two different things, uh, and I'll let Dan add in to the external grease trap is something that's required for your sewer line. So any oils that go through your kitchen or waste um, materials that go through your kitchen lines get collected in the grease trap and that gets pumped out before it goes to the sewer. It's not for disposal of cooking oil, which is what um, what Dan was was referencing before. Okay, so one for the kitchen and the other for the like uh, for the cooking oil. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. And uh, the site plan, so the, right now, the one we sh saw, it's not showing the divider uh, for the uh, for divider, right? In the middle? Correct. So that, okay. Right. That will be a change because that's those are the comments that we just got from DOT. Okay. And then, then it, um, the uh, curb over there, so that's going to be demolished, right? 
So the existing, here, I'll share. So right now, the existing driveway, you can see it barely here. The existing driveway is here. I'd say driveway, it's more of a ramp. Um, it does not meet DOT requirements. Um, it does not meet uh, vehicle circulation, uh, maneuvering requirements either. That's why we have to go with the new, with the new driveway, whether it's right in, right out or full access. So um, this, this area of the sidewalk will be demoed in here and, and a portion here because we're, we are doing the right in right out with the, with the island in the middle. So this portion that we have as darker yeah. will be replaced within so the DOT the right away. Dash line over there, right? Like right, this will be new curbing and new sidewalk with um, ADA accessible ramps. Okay. Okay. All right, any other questions? Yes, Madam Chair, just a couple. Um, on the future pad, which you, you have no knowledge of what's going in there, is there anything that typically does go in there, another food business, or can you answer that? We couldn't. I mean, she could be doing retail. She could be doing, there, there's no, there has been no discussions with us and no, and Dan, there's no pro, prohibitions from her, nothing on her, the least, prohibits her from doing anything on that other lease pad, right? No, oh, we, we hope they don't put a Popeyes there. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm so. just, I'm used to seeing them where they have a, another, like a, there used to be the uh, A&W route there attached to them or in the same facility. Um, also, what are the hours of operation? Uh, we will be uh, probably um, by 10, 10 a.m., probably to uh, probably midnight. Um, I think two. We certainly won't be. Um, our other restaurant is open to two a.m. on the one on Montello, so um, pro probably midnight is what we'd apply for. All right, and open at ten a.m. because I thought if you're going to open up for breakfast over with that traffic on the weekdays, it would be brutal. No, 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 uh, no okay. breakfast for us right now. And just lastly, I'm just looking at that plan, the. A budding parcel to the east where a restaurant just opened up. I think it's the Cajun Kitchen now. It's been a dozen different things. Is there, I don't remember, and I drive by there all the time. Um, is there a separation there? Or is that an open common parking area? There isn't a separation between. Um, there used so, to be years ago, but I don't think, I think there is. That there, I think that there is right now. It's a it's a grassed area with okay. cars parking towards. Just wouldn't want to look for a parking lot nightmare like sometimes we have up at Westgate Mall with different businesses and traffic coming in and out. Mm -hmm. So we have, a, we made sure that we saw a cut. I'll share again. I, I like seeing faces, so I'm sorry for keep on okay. flipping back and forth. One of the comments that Rob had was to add a Cape Cod berm along here, just so that there isn't connection between okay. the two. Um, we also have a grass panel. We we cut back. So right, this is the existing grass area in here. We cut right. that back on both ends just to have a green panel between a separation between okay, it is definitely it a, a separation there better. then of some sort okay right. thank you that's all i have for questions thank you all right thank you we'll open up to a public comment rob so anybody wishing to make public comment please use the uh raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen press star nine if you're on the phone And Madam Chair, I do not see anyone raising their hand just at this time. Okay, is there a motion? Motion to approve with standard conditions. Madam Chair, on the motion. Um, add the clarification to the storage plan for the used cooking oil. And the new driveway, MassDOT driveway. And the new MassDOT driveway. 
Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right. Roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Mike Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, board. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Next up, we have site plan approval for 175 Warren Ave. This is Kaisel Booz Associates, Inc. Um, Representative Niche Engineering. Just um, as a reminder again, this has gone through tech review and been approved. So uh, be as brief as possible and we'll then open it up to planning board questions. Thank you. And so people have a better understanding. This is the new public safety building um, on Warren Avenue. Okay. Yes, good, good evening, how are you doing? I'm Sean Schmiegel from Council Booz Associates. Uh, I unfortunately have a meeting at seven, but I have Eric Royce here, um, um, along who's our landscape architect, as well as Niche Engineering, who was a civil architect, a civil engineer on the project. Um, Unfortunately, I don't know if it's Josh or Paige. Uh, Rob, I don't know if anyone else I has hand raised. Saw, I saw. Uh, hang on. Josh should be coming over shortly. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> All right, great. There he is. So I'll do a quick introduction because uh, I do apologize. I do have to jump off. But Josh has been involved in the project since day one regarding through technical review. Uh, Eric Royce, he's been involved in the last six or seven months. Um, we have, as, as Rob noted, we've gone through planning, oh, sorry, <laughs> technical review um, over the course of the summer. Uh, and we're at the, obviously at the stage right now, <laughs> planning board. Um, I will, we're, we're, if the site plan can get brought up, I don't know if that would be through you, Eric. Um, I can bring it up. If you're able to. Uh, but this is the entire site, as Rob noted, for the public safety facility, which includes fire, police, uh, emergency management agency, as well as city IT. Um, and it's and it's the entire site of uh, Warren Ave, West Elm, uh, Goddard, and Highland. Um, as Eric gets through this uh, with the updates, uh, we'll be able to, he can give a better update on where we started or where we ended up and where we are today. Uh, but again, that's, that's, it's the existing uh, Champion High School Center <coughs> on Warren Ave. Um, and we are encountering or taking over the entire site for this public safety complex. Uh, so at this time, Eric, I'll, I'll, I'll steal your thunder. I do have to jump unfortunately, but um, Eric can reach and respond as well as Josh. So I, I appreciate my time and your time as well, um, but I will uh, look forward to uh, hearing the comments afterwards. Good luck. One of the disadvantages of uh, Zoom meetings is we're doing four meetings at once nowadays. Yeah. Um, can you put that I, in presentation mode so we can all get a better can, look? I will. Can you see it in presentation mode? Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, and can you see my cursor? Yes, we can. Okay. So this is the site here. Um, it's bounded by Warren Ave, Goddard Road, West Elm, and Highland. Um, over here is the Firestone Service Center, if you know where that is. And up here is Legion Avenue or Legion Parkway, just to so you could get your bearings. Uh, also down here is a housing authority property um, down on West Elm Street. Um, so you get your um, bearings. Um, just before I get off of this plan, one thing we, the town, the city has done was they took over all these properties up on Highland. Those have all been demolished at this point. Um, they are, portions of those properties are part of the project. Portions of the properties are part of a, a different project, which is the streetscapes um, all around um, the site. Uh, so the city is is redoing the streets and the street lighting and all the controls as a separate project. Um, it's kind of working in parallel with our project on, on the public safety side. Um, but um, that's kind of lagging behind at this point. It's a, it's a separate project, but we'll go through that. Um, 
as we go forward. So again, this is the site, kind of the site context where we are in the city. Um, and this is the site, what we've got right now. So what is proposed is the, is the three-story public safety complex. So this is going to house um, fire, fire apparatus and the fire department on this end, on, the, uh, on this end of the building, the highland end of the, the building. And then the Eric, middle, excuse me for, yes. for just one second, for the folks that are watching, the image has reoriented itself. So it's turned 90 degrees. So north is now to the right of the, yeah. uh, of the plan. Warren Avenue is at the bottom um, and West Elm is on the left-hand side of, of the screen. Yes, thank you. Um, so this is the main part with the, the police and part of the project is a three-story parking garage which is what this um, tan area is. That parking garage is going to be con controlled access and is just going to be for staff and patrol parking for the police. Um, that parking garage contains 251 spaces. And then on the surface over here behind the fire apparatus bay is the surface parking that's for the fire. Um, and that's approximately 41 spaces. Um, some of the things that we've got going on on site um, and what I'll do is I'll kind of go clockwise around here. So we've got the lower level access to the garage and then a mid-level access to the garage off of Goddard Road. Um, the garage does have interior ramps. So all of the levels are connected on the interior of the garage also. Um, Moving to the north uh, toward Highland Street, we, we have the surface parking. Um, some of the stair towers and the staff entry to the safety complex will be in this courtyard here. Um, that courtyard also contains the emergency generator, the transformer um, for, the, for the emergencies of, uh, of, the, of the building. Once we get over toward the fire department apparatus bay more. We've got the fire training tower, which is this square right in here. Uh, next to that is dumpsters. Um, the, the fire apparatus apron for um, getting the apparatus in and out and also for practice for the fire. Um, a <clears throat> above ground fueling tank on the north end of the site. Um, and then some surface parking here. This is all enclosed with a ornamental fence um, that comes all the way around back to the garage um, just for security for that area. Uh, on the wet Warren Avenue side, we have the apron that comes out of the, the apparatus bay for the fire, another transformer in the corner, our, um, our site project sign, which is a electronic message board sign with a masonry column next to it. Um, and then the, the main public entry for the building, which is right in here, uh, with flagpoles and then the public parking, we've actually, we're actually going to widen out Warren Avenue to provide a turning lane, a left-hand turning lane. And that public parking is going to work into that scheme right in here to get into the entry of the, the main entry of the building. At the corner of West Elm and Warren Avenue, we have a little pocket park. Um, the angles on this look like it's almost a um, orthometric drawing, but this is actually a plan view drawing of the park, which is going to be a number of, of granite and paver, pavers and granite walls, and then a wood pergola up at the top. Um, worked in with that pocket park area is our uh, prisoner discharge walk, which is coming out here against the garage. This area, all these areas are very well lit, um, but especially this area with the prisoner discharge coming out onto the street. The, on West Elm, um, we're going to save the stairs to the existing high school here. Um, and right now we're considering also um, saving the upper uh, flight of stairs and the ornamental entry to the high school, which is right about in this location. So we had considered putting it down here before, and that's where it's shown on the plans, but the team design team is, is presently considering leaving it in place. Um, oops, sorry about that. 
um, we'll come back to you if that actually comes through, but I, I wanted to mention that. So then we've got the green area out front. We're saving those large um, plantain trees that are out front um, through here. Uh, they're not showing on this plan, but those are all saving, um, being saved and then providing an accessible walk coming down to the intersection of West Elm Street and Goddard Road. Uh, so that's the layout. And then some of the images of what the building will look like. This is the view from Warren Ave with the apparatus bay on the left, uh, the, the main entry in the middle. Um, and this would be a view from Legion Ave or Legion Parkway. The green lawn in the front is a bit deceptive because that is the Firestone. Right. So, <clears throat> the parking lot at the moment. Um, and this would be a view from more or less down the corner near uh, West Elm and Warren Ave. ASAC's law office. This is a view of that. Uh, pocket park that I had mentioned. <clears throat> this would be a view from West Elm and Goddard. This is the stair tower to the garage. And you can see we've provided, um, we're going to provide a kind of a trellis wire system for plantings on the side of the garage on this face um, so that plantings can, can um, grow up the side of the garage. We're also in the lower right-hand corner. This stair is actually gonna be recycled from the existing building. So we're gonna to try to save as many of the existing stair, granite stair treads and granite cheek walls as we can to be able to rebuild a stair in that location. Um, and that's, um, See if I could share a different screen here. And remember, you need to unshare and then reshare if you're changing applications. Oh, okay. <clears throat> It was a very, very informative and nice presentation. I, I don't know um, if you want the planning board to open up with questions for you. I was just going to go through the drainage and the utilities really quick, and then I'll open it up. Um, so if you're seeing that, that's um, this just is from the actual it. drawing set that we <clears throat> submitted. And a, and a high, high, high level overview would be fine. Uh, that's what you will get. So there's a lot showing on this drawing, but um, we basically have typical drainage coming out to the street. Um, we're picking up all the roof drains. We're bringing it out to Warren Ave. Uh, we're, we're getting into the existing sanitary system in Warren Ave. We also have some, we're picking up a lot of roof drains and foundation drainage, which is going into a infiltration storage system at the, the corner of uh, West Elm and Warren. Um, and that goes out to the street. And then our larger underground system is up on Gar off of Goddard Road. That's picking up a lot of the, the apron and the roof drainage from the, the garage and the building. But again, that's the underground storage, uh, which overflows back down to the, the Goddard drainage system, which goes out to the uh, out to the south. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'll, I'll keep it at a 10,000 foot level and 
take your questions. It really is a beautiful plan. Um, job well done. Questions from the planning board? Yeah, uh, could we go to that corner park area um, again, if you could, with the slides? I'm just curious again as to what it actually is. Okay, um, I'll stop sharing and reshare. So, counts, uh, I've been on the design team um, since the beginning of this process um, and, and want to say that we wanted to include a, a, a public space on this site uh, to uh, both enhance green space and to create a, a point of reflection. Uh, we're calling it a peace park. Um, you can see that there are some columns that uh, are being reused from the uh, old high school, um, but, and, and a pergola where people can sit and, um, uh, and, and chat. Um, but it's, it's just a general um, passive recreational space. Okay. Was a waterfall or any kind of water uh, considered in that area? It looks like it's deserving. The, yeah, there's no water feature. Uh, we were trying to keep it simple and easy to maintain. Okay. Um, the city and, is and also stingy. pretty open. The city is stingy on water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, as much as we love fountains, somebody has to pay for it. And it's yeah. All right. One, one thing at a time, I guess. Thank you, Jim. Any other questions from the planning board? Oh, I, I, and I, I have a follow-up question. So uh, you did mention there would be uh, some recycled materials. I, are we talking uh, the, the, the facade of the current school near the garage up that way? Is that what you were suggesting as a possibility? So yes, the, right now they're the front end, this is, these are the front stairs that go up to the high school or the former high school. Um, there's an, actually another flight of stairs in here that we had originally been planning on taking out, mm -hmm. and that um, and that ends at the front doorway of the high school, which includes columns and an ornamental archway. Okay. Uh, and the idea was to put it down in this park, um, uh. but structurally wise, we we realized we could leave it in place and probably save a good chunk of money. So. We're con we're considering that right now whether that can be done or not. Again, okay. we'll come back to you if if that becomes an option. All right, thank you. All for saving money. All right. Okay. Any other questions? So I just have. Here, if I may. Question. Sorry, I, I I have one question uh, regarding the fire apparatus. So you said they will be coming out to the Warren avenue right and while going back they will use the corded road correct or they can move any direction right that's that's currently the plan okay okay yeah no other question very nice looking building um chief williams exciting. huh thank, Sorry. thank you um so the where the fire protection lines going in, I'm guessing the sprinkler room will be in the building close to that location. Yes. And um, could you just bring that plan up and show me where the closest hydrant is to that that location? Oh, um, I'm gonna have to switch screens again.
So if you're seeing that, um, we've got a water line coming in on the backside for practice. Right. There will be a uh, hydrant right off the existing fueling station. Um, and right. as well but how as about on Warren hydrant. Avenue? Where's your nearest hydrant? There's a hydrant uh, right off of Frederick Douglass um, Drive. Okay. Um, yeah, an existing hydrant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we would like to see a hydrant on the west side of Warren Avenue so that, God forbid, we ever have to use that for the fire service. We don't tie up the street with lines going across and cut apparatus responses um, away from Warren Avenue. Could you say that one more time, please? Sure. Where you have your water line going in, you have the 8-inch water line going in. Yep. Um, if we could have a hydrant right in that general vicinity so that we don't have to cross the road with hoses if we sure. use it. That way we don't cross um, the road with the hose and trucks can't cross the hose lines. So that's okay. a fire hydrant on Warren Ave next to the water. You repeat that? Next to the eight inch um, fire protection line, somewhere in that general vicinity. Yep, on the western side of, of Warren Avenue. Right. Western side, okay. Yeah, so right in that eight inch line is going to supply both the uh, main building and the garage. Yes. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have, ma'am. All right. There are no other questions. We can open up to public comment. And I'm sorry before we, we leave that topic. Um, now, is that preferred to be its own tap off the main or fed off of the, the fire protection service to the building? It, its own tap. Okay. Thank you. Public comment. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a comment, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. If you're calling in, please press star nine and we can open up your microphone. And I do not have anybody with their hand up at this time. All right, we'll move to a motion, please. Motion to approve with new fire hydrant. Second. Okay, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rudy Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Thank you. Okay, next up we have site plan approval for 34 North Pearl Street. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. So if you're associated with 34 North Pearl, please raise your hand so I can move you into um, Representative Richard Falcon. Hi, everyone. My name is, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. My name is Craig Nunez. I'm uh, representing Invalian Technologies Corporation. I will be presenting for Richard Vulcan and the project at 34 North Pearl Street for the three solar canopies that we are proposing to install. And Pat Clooney is with you also? I believe Patrick Clooney is in the call as well. Okay. I've just promoted him. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Do I have the ability to share my screen? Yes, you do. Okay. Oh, there we go. I'm trying to share it right now. I'm sorry, I just killed, knocked Jim out. I'm going to move him back in. I apologize. I'm trying to share my screen right now. I apologize for this right now. Um, 
Are you able to see it right now? No, we're not. Uh, uh, do you have a two monitor system? No, I do not. I am on um, I am on Google Chrome. Evan, by chance, do you have it? I was just going to say I have it if you need me to share. Um, if you could share, that would be greatly appreciated as I'm trying okay. to find it right now and I'm trying to switch over. So again, I apologize to the board of Brockton. No worries, Evan, to save the day. Thank you, Evan. Much appreciated. Okay, so again, my name is Craig Nunez. I'm the project manager here for Invaliant Solar Corporations, and we are proposing a three carport canopy at 34 North Pearl Street. Um, it is a 715 um, megawatt DC uh, system. And right now we're on the title page. Can you go back to the title page, Evan? So the title page includes um, notes. It has the engineering stamp, uh, a location map showing the address on Google Maps, a satellite view showing the building as of last year, um, and the proposed system located on the bottom. As you can see to the north west, there is one solar canopy. Uh, just south of that, there is another solar canopy. And to the southeast, you will see the third and final solar canopy. Next page. Uh, back to the general notes section, please. Uh, stay on this right here. Yeah, right there. there uh, just to let the board know, this is a general notes section, um, standard uh, construction notes in um, all of our projects. Oh, uh, you're killing me. Next page. Uh, here we have uh, proposed site alternatives from the uh, previous uh, parking lot. You can see the parking lot has changed um, from the old parking lot. This was a request from the tech review. Next page. Uh, this page is a proposed site alternatives. As you can see, it shows in red the um, three carport canopies, again, to the northwest, southwest, and southeast in relation to the parking plan on site. Next page. This page is a site plan showing um, everything again from the previous page. We have the setbacks included, the 30-foot setback from the front, the 20-foot setback from the sides, and the 25 from the rear. Next page. Here is the uh, finalized parking plan for 34 North Pearl Street. It shows all curbing, shows all sidewalks in detail. Also shows abutting properties um, to the south and one to the north. Next page. Can you go back one page, please? Sure can. Okay. No, the next parking page. or the utilities? Utilities, utilities please. Utilities. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, this is all utilities located on site, underground utilities currently. We have uh, we have uh, radared all utilities and um, located everything that is on site in regards to um, canopy piers, in installation of the, the solar canopy piers. Next page. This page is a request from the tech review. It's a uh, section view to scale showing a uh, residence on Albany Street. Uh, the height of that building is about 23 foot 6, 24 feet total. Um, and as you can see, it's about 350 feet between the uh, front, front of the house to all the way to the rear edge of that solar canopy. Um, it also shows an elevation difference showing that the solar canopy is slightly higher in elevation then the residences. This was a request from Site Tech Review showing the nearest residence in relation to solar canopies. Uh, there's also a um, area of trees located to the rear of the property that um, blocks and obstructs the view from that residence. Next page. 
This page is a canopy section showing our uh, structural foundation in the ground. Uh, also, it shows the bottom of structure heights on the left and the bottom of structure heights on the right. The lowest canopy section is at 16 foot, zero inches. Next page. In this page, we have some foundation details. Uh, for these solar carport canopies, they are 36 inch wide um, foundations that, that are installed at 16 foot high um, piers. They uh, include 15 foot six tall rebar cages, structural rebar cages, as well as you can see on the left, it's a, an anchor bolt <coughs> system to make the connection to the solar canopy above. Uh, we have a plate <coughs> detail as well. Next page. Uh, this page is a detail of the found of the uh, steel components and all their connections, showing um, how we install all these steel connections and the bolts used, as well as steel. Next page. This is a uh, fire truck sweat path analysis. As you can see, we took the tightest, the center, and the largest radiuses of the fire truck to show um, that the fire truck can clearly move within the spaces of the parking area um, while attending to a casualty. Next page. This page is for an ambulance sweat path analysis. Um, it also shows to the rear of the building as there is an ambulance um, um, accepted bay at that area. Next page. And the last page is a sweat path analysis of a box truck. All three of these sweat path analysis were requested by Site Tech Review. Um, I had a lovely video, but unfortunately, I'm unable to share my screen right now, so I'm unable to share that video. Um, and I will open it up to questions. Okay. Uh, I don't have any questions. Planning board members, do you? Okay. If not, moving on to public comment. Members of the public, if you have comments or questions, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen or, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, or press star nine if you're on the phone. And Madam Chair, I do not see anybody with their hands up. All right, we'll move on to a motion, please. Motion to approve with standard conditions. Second. All right, roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Marita Das? Yes. Monica Gonzalez? Yes. All right, thank you, Mr. Nunes. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Next up, site plan approval, 1159 Main Street. Gino's Restaurant, J.K. Holmgren is the representative. Scott, is there anybody? Oh, there's Gino. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, uh, folks. Uh, thanks for your patience tonight. A little bit crazy running around between the two boards, but... Uh, Looks like I made it work. So uh, what I have before you tonight is a site plan uh, <clears throat> approval for Gino's restaurant. Uh, Gino currently has a restaurant at six, uh, sorry, 769 Main Street, and he's looking to expand uh, his restaurant, move to this location at 1159 Main Street. Uh, it's had a bunch of uses uh, over the years. Recently, it was a, uh, a thrift store for Teen Challenge. Uh, Gino and his wife have bought the property uh, going back a couple of years ago, have worked uh, with the planning department to try to uh, develop the property, uh, make it work for his restaurant. And we think we've done that with the plan that I have before you. Uh, there are going to be some changes made to the inside of the building. The exterior of the building uh, is pretty much staying the way it is now. Uh, we did go to tech review uh, back in May and received some comments 
uh, from the different department heads, made a few changes, uh, really the most significant of which was moving the dumpster location to the middle of the of the row of parking just to keep it uh, more away from the abutting residential properties. Uh, really the, the biggest thing we're doing on the site is uh, we received a, a parking easement from the church next door to us. So we have shared parking between us, the church next door. Uh, we have an easement there as part of our site plan, we're proposing to rebuild the entire parking area uh, in the back right now, it, it's kind of a broken pavement, uh, gravel parking area. We're going to rebuild the entire parking area. Excuse me, Scott. Yes. Do you have a site plan that the board can look at? I was hoping you wouldn't ask, but I do, Mr. Uh, Rob. I do. Good. Please share it. Just for the heck of it. Thank you. Is it? Yes. All right. Now I just worry about, you know, losing my connection and you guys rambling on without me for 15 minutes before you finally cut me loose. So hopefully that doesn't happen again tonight. But here is the plan, folks. Uh, so, again, the the main uh, the main changes we're making existing building 1159, 1171, which is the Bethesda Missionary Baptist Church. There is currently a driveway between the two buildings, which we would obviously be maintaining. And we're going to construct this giant parking area uh, in the rear of uh, the two buildings. We'll have 32 parking spaces, uh, which we're figuring will be more than enough for Gino's restaurant. As part of that parking lot expansion, we have a couple of landscaped areas, some landscaping around the perimeter uh, to provide a, a little bit better uh, buffer to the neighboring residential properties. In addition to that, uh, really a, a big change. I'm just flipping through, getting to the drainage. We have a, a large uh, drainage system proposed. Right now, uh, like a lot of these sites, uh, downtown especially, there is no drainage at all. Everything kind of runs off to abutting properties and eventually out to the public roads, uh, which we're really trying to get away from doing that uh, to come up and, and meet with uh, current stormwater management guidelines. So in this situation, uh, we have a large drainage area infiltration system proposed to handle the runoff from uh, the rooftop and uh, from the parking lot. The other significant change we're making is to the front of the the front of the store. Uh, we had a lot of again a lot of input from the planning department as to how they wanted it to look. Uh, we're proposing a bunch of landscaping uh, out in the front and a, a small outdoor seating area. Uh, in addition to the one handicap spot, the existing doors uh, will be still in use. So it provides, uh, we're figuring about four or five tables on the outside, uh, some bollards and, and uh, decorative fencing to protect the, the patrons that would be eating outside uh, from any, uh, any traffic, obviously, and there's bollards separating the one handicap spot. All of the other parking, uh, will be in the back in our new parking area, Madam Chair. Uh, that's really a, a quick rundown. If there's any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Um, I see there was a need to have the easement recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Did that happen? Yes, that's correct, Madam Chair. So there is uh, there was an existing easement that went between the two buildings uh, just to allow both properties to use the driveway separating the two buildings, but that did not give us the right to park on uh, on the, the the church property. Since then, uh, we've come up with a new easement plan and an easement agreement, both of which have uh, been recorded at the Registry of Deeds, which gives us uh, permission to, to park on the church property. Okay, thank you. And uh, you understand Chike, the city engineer, has to review the site plan before permits are granted? Yes. Okay. All right. Any other questions from planning board members? Madam Chair, it's Larry. Sure. Go ahead, Larry. Um, just first of all, I think um, this is a really good plan. And Gino's is, is a well-established restaurant in the city of Brock and has been around as many years. I, I don't know, probably over 20 years. So I'm in favor of this. Um, but Scott, can you, has, have those easements been recorded yet? Because that was a big issue that we saw on some of the staff notes. It, I, They've both the uh, the easement document and the easement plan have been recorded. Uh, 
and I believe Attorney Creedon forwarded, I believe I re, I forwarded the recording info for the plan. Attorney Creedon forwarded the uh, recording info for the document. Yeah. Uh, all, Scott, all the easement issues are all set. Okay. Thank you, Evan. Thank, Good, you. thank you. Other questions? Okay. Open up for public comment. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the public, if you have questions on this uh, or comments, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen or press star nine if you're on a phone. And I do not see anyone with their hand up at this moment. All right, I'll move on to, is there a motion? Motion to approve with the following conditions. The city engineer must review and approve the site plan revisions before permits are granted. Second. All right. Roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Congratulations, Genos. Thank you very much, folks. Appreciate the help. Okay. Okay. Next up, we have a preliminary subdivision, 20 Winter Street. Applicant is Pedro Elias and J.K. Holmgren. Scott? Yeah, Madam Chair, I was before you folks at the last meeting and uh, got about 99% through my, uh, my speech to you folks, my presentation, and I lost my Zoom connection. And because I was at the office and my kids were home, I had nobody to help me get it back. So, so unfortunately, I could hear you guys. Uh, talking about the project, and I appreciate the fact that nobody at least publicly made fun of me for my technical difficulties, but uh, because of that, you folks... Supposedly, we're going to be able to use the garage, period. <laughs> so, Chief, Robin, you're on a hot but, mic. But the long-term plan... Chief Williams? Talking. Chief Williams, you mute your line, thanks. There you go. Uh, so I'll just give you the, the quick down and dirty version, Madam Chair and board members. Uh, Mr. Elias owns property at 20 Winter Street. Uh, on a roll, if you want me to share the screen, I'll try that again. You see that? Not yet. Not yet. Come on, Scott, before Rob makes fun of you. Pressure's on. Well, I'm sorry I can't get the plan. Uh, Evan? <laughs> can, Evan, can you give Scott a hand? Thank there you, Evan. There you go. Beautiful. Thank you, folks. All right. So, as I said, 20 Winter Street, uh, Mr. Elias has owned the property. Uh, it's an existing single family house. So we're coming before you for a preliminary subdivision to allow us to go before the ZBA. And what Mr. Elias wants to do, he has a growing family. Uh, his wife in particular would like a large kitchen and dining area, which he can't provide for her at 20 Winter Street. So they'd like to build a new house uh, in on the backside of their property. Uh, it, it's kind of a, a strange situation. The zone line cuts right through the property. The existing house on Winter Street is zoned R2, which is a multifamily zone, only requires 7,500 square feet. The back of the property, uh, going from Howard Street, cutting across Mr. Elias's property, is zoned R1C, requiring 175 feet of frontage and 30,000 square feet of area. Uh, so what Mr. Elias would like to do is to divide the property uh, in line with the zone line to create a new lot A, <clears throat> that would be his existing house number 20 on Winter Street, be able to sell that lot and then build himself and his wife a new house on lot B. So lot B, uh, again, would be in an R1C zone. We need 175 feet of frontage. We have 155. We need 30,000 square feet. We need about, we have about 16,000. Uh, all of the lots surrounding us on Merritt Ave uh, are all, you know, right around eight to 10,000 square feet. It's uh, it's really in, in line with the neighborhood. And uh, that's what we're hoping, Madam Chair. There's available utilities on Merritt Ave. Uh, we really don't see any uh, any issues with building a new house on, on the new lot B. The new home will meet all of the other zoning requirements. 
as far as setback go for the new dwelling. Uh, it'll just be the short on the area and 20 feet short on the frontage uh, that we would be looking for relief if you folks approve the preliminary and allow us to go before the ZBA, Madam Chair. Okay. All right, thank you, Scott. Um, I see there was a concern with the unfinished portion of Merritt Ave being built out and completed to connect to Winter Street. Yeah, we Merritt Ave ends uh, what would into the I-2 zone, the, the road, the pavement ends. So it does not connect to Winter Street. We wouldn't be uh, proposing to connect it to Winter Street exactly. It ends right around that area. So there's plenty of room for us to have uh, frontage and access for our new home off of Merritt Ave to have a curb cut uh, off of Merritt Ave. And we wouldn't have the need to extend it at all, Madam Chair. Um, Rob, this seemed to be important to the planning department. Do you want to elaborate? Uh, the planning department, uh, the the roads that. First of all, I got to make sure I'm I'm unmuted. I'm sorry, I'm on another screen. Uh, the roads that come off of Winter Street are all unfinished, so that they do not connect to the. Uh, although they were platted that way, they don't connect to. Um, and I can't remember the name of the street that's in the back, Oscar. Right. Um, and so there's really one way in and out for all of these uh, homes back here. Right. And um, the city was, uh, and, and the, the planning department and the city engineer have recommended that Merritt Street be constructed through so that it comes through to um, winter. Uh, right now, all the traffic is forced to um, come down uh into a terrible intersection where Winter and um, Covington, Covington uh, separate uh, or, or come together. And having Merritt come through would not only give the residents of that neighborhood a, a secondary access, but would also <laughs> improve circulation uh, for fire equipment. Heard that, Madam Chair, I, I, I wasn't aware. Uh that the planning department was looking to do that, uh, we would have no issue with uh, with having that a, a condition of approval for the preliminary. And obviously we would have to show all of those details during the definitive part if we did get relief okay. from the ZBA. So we don't have any objections to that at all, Madam Chair. All right, thank you, Scott. Planning um, board, questions? Hey, is this open to the public, Rob? Um, it is open to the public. Um, those wishing to speak, please use the raise your hand icon. Um, press star nine if you're on the phone. And I have Councillor Jack Lally with his hand up. And you are uh, a panelist and you, are, you, may, you may speak now. Well, thank you. How are you, uh, Commissioners? Mr. Director, um, I wanted to just say that I have heard uh, from the folks on Merit uh, quite a bit. Uh, they are, I'd say, universally opposed to extending their street. Um, the concerns about the house, you know, and, and the construction are, are really secondary com compared to that, um, you know, I've I've had you know some people say that the house isn't a concern. Some people you know don't want the house built nearby, but uh, you know everyone is on the same page that they you know they have a very quiet street. Uh, you know they know all their neighbors. They know all the cars that are supposed to be there. They have a you know a nice a nice uh, thing going you know going for them, um, and they would really rather you know not have it connect. Uh, I don't think, you know, I, th I think I understand the, the purpose of connecting it, um, but I don't think it's going to uh, change that many, you know, that many things for that many people. Uh, and my concern is that it could really complicate um, matters with that, uh, that neighborhood a little further. 
uh, basically from Howard Street to the intersection of Hovenden and Winter, there are a lot of different roads that enter uh, that area. So we wind up with, you know, a, a less than a quarter mile stretch of road where you have um, Dyer Street, Monument Street, Douglas Ave, uh, Anger Ave, which all these houses, you know, come off of, um, you know, all emptying and, and, you know, all of their traffic onto that very small stretch of uh, winter. Oh, thank you for whoever put the, uh, the map up. Um, additionally, it's not, you know, the biggest thing, but there is a lot of traffic in and out of uh, Tin Ray's Pizza as well. Uh, which is, you know, good to see, but it also does mean that, you know, there's a lot of cars moving in and out. So merit as it is, I think is probably, um, even, even safer just for traffic control. Uh, it's one less, one less, uh, sort of outlet where there's so much traffic, um, if the if the neighborhood were frustrated by it or concerned about it, I would, uh, you know, obviously ad advocate otherwise, and that would obviously, you know, affect, you know, what what needs to happen. But basically, um, you know, the concerns I've gotten are are that they, you know, they'd like the peace and quiet of the dead end, uh, and you know, really, it's it's not the it's not the biggest it's not the biggest change but i do have concerns just about how that's gonna play out traffic can back uh you know not all the way up to douglas but traffic at the light for winter and howard does back up to the point where it would block the end of merit anyway um so i'm not i'm not sure how uh effective it would be it makes it makes sense on a on a planning you know in a planning wise uh you know a layout but i i don't believe that uh you know we would we would gain much functionality from it uh you know i i think if anything they'd really they'd really prefer it stipulated that the road be not completed mm. thank you so if i'm hearing you correctly the concern is they like their quiet dead end street which you know i, I understand that but if there's traffic, um, and I guess I'll address this to Rob, is is this going to help the flow of traffic? Is that the reason the department wants it because of the backed up traffic currently? So that there's another route. Well, if I may, I'm I'm sorry, Director May, uh, but this the merit does not provide another route a way to divert any traffic. It would just add uh, another sort of place where traffic can be uh, added. Okay. Uh, questions from the planning board? So oh. currently the Merritt Street is a one-way street or two-way street? I mean- Two-way. Two way. It's a two way dead end street. So, okay. My inclination would be to leave it alone. Uh, it really, I think it would do more harm and disruption than it would be than being beneficial. That's just my opinion. Thank you, Jim. Um, Chief Williams, do you have any thoughts you want to weigh in on this? Unfortunately, I have too many thoughts on this. Um, Rob is right. It would help uh, our access to the area, but at the same time, it would destroy a neighborhood. Uh, if they were going to extend the street, I'd probably be all behind it. But the fact the, of the matter is the where they're going to build the house is already tied. There's already a house across the street from it. Um, Yes, it would improve traffic flow in the area, but it would also destroy that quaint little area. And I have to be upfront and tell you that my cousin lives next door to the lot that's uh, uh, proposed. And um, he has no objections to the house being built, but he doesn't want to see the street put through. So 
that's kind of where I stand. I'm wishy-washy on this one. Yeah, yeah. So kind of destroy the neighborhood is a little hard. Um, just, you know, make it, you know, no longer a private little area for the current residents. But technically, we're well, not going to destroy it. It would, it would, be, it would take a dead-end street that's got six or seven houses on it and make it a, a main thoroughfare. So Well, it, all of these houses... And these that you talked about, the six or seven, the only way out is down here on Anger and into this horrible intersection here. And if you, whoops, sorry, I zoomed in too much. If you, and I zoomed out too far, if you look at the catchment of this area, you really don't have, It's not like you're going to be creating a, a cut through because you can come out here um, for these houses that are up here. Um, so basically what you're doing is allowing the homes that are here, you're giving them the choice of, do you come down to this awful intersection or do you come out and you know do something that's a little bit more safer here? I don't know why the city did not require the builder to build all the way through. This is a habit that the city has been in in the past. Um, you know, uh, as we've created new cul-de-sacs in the city, we've required them to have places for emergency vehicles to um, turn around. None of these streets meet those qualifications. Um, I, but uh, I, I understand how the neighbors feel. Um, I live on Oak Street, so I have quite a bit of traffic in my front yard. And they obviously don't want um, Oak Street kind of traffic or Howard Street kind of traffic, but they're not going to get that because this whole section of road doesn't really go anywhere except for out back to this intersection. Yeah, I see that. It's Thanks for pulling this up and pointing it out that way. It wouldn't, it, I, I don't see it increasing a lot of traffic. It's just another route, road to extend for those houses there on that end. And, um, and we're trying to get away from this in the city or this, like you said, Rob, it should have, the builder should have been made to extend that road to begin with and an error was made. And now this is an opportunity to correct it. 90% of our job right now in, in you know, for Evan and myself is, is correcting mistakes that were made 20 or 30 years ago. Yeah. Well, I have to say I'm in favor of, of, of it. It makes sense to me. But I'm, I'm not going to die on this hill if, if the board chooses otherwise. Okay. Any other questions from the planning board? Madam Chair, um, I, Scott, I have a, a question on this then. If, I mean, your opinion of it is that it's not necessary to open that road up to make it feasible to, to build that home, correct? And, and all the town um, utilities are there, they're not. Yeah, we, you know, we always look at, you know, and, and I think the planning department does too. You, you know, we look for frontage access and area. We already, you know, we obviously have frontage uh, that you folks are going to be approving and we have access. So, you know, the road is built. It's been there, you know, for 50 years or however long it's been. Uh, so we do have access that way. You know, from the, the public safety point of view, you know, nobody wants nobody wants dead end streets for a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, you know, the old excuse used to be if there was a tree down, how would the fire department get to a house if there's a tree down up the road, if that's the only way in? So you could see that being a problem if there was a, you know, some kind of an incident on Oscar Ave after anger or have uh so i i i guess similar to rob i i wouldn't want to die on this hill either i i don't think either way i i can understand i can certainly understand if i live there i wouldn't be happy about the cut through either because there there are going to be some guys that do use it as a cut through I, I don't think it's a huge number but obviously somebody will use it as a cut through so i can certainly understand the neighborhood's concern but either way mr hassan i guess to to give you a roundabout answer uh, without extending the road, we've got frontage and access and utilities available. So we can certainly do it that way as well. Thank you, Scott. Other questions? 
Um, just, I mean, I there was a staff note that the city engineer had suggested the continuation of that road or finishing of that road. I mean, is it without really putting more pressure on what they were already doing because it's a preliminary plan? Is this maybe something we should have them take another look at in a discussion with? Or I know Scott doesn't want to hear that, but. Well, I heard Scott say he was fine with it being a condition. I, think, I, I don't know exactly how, how you would word it, but either way, we, you know, assuming we get past this tonight, we still have to go to the ZBA to get their okay. approval. And then we have to come back before you folks uh, for a definitive approval, whether that definitive includes extending the roadway or is just a definitive approval with waivers just to allow the the division of the property as shown. Either way, we're coming back before you folks. Uh, you know, so I, I I think we have time to kick it around a little bit more, I guess, without stopping us. And I guess just, we need to get to the ZBA to see if we can even do this at this point, I guess is my point, Mr. Hazan. I guess that's all I have for questions right now. Thank you. Farida, anybody else? All I think about if we, like, I don't know, if instead of having a two-way road, if we can have a one-way road, then then we will reduce some number of traffic. I don't know. That's my point of view or opinion. Mm -hmm. Good thought. Okay. Would Any the applicant... Um, would the applicant consider a traffic study that if we put in conditionally that it's open and the traffic study shows that there's uh, a, a positive effect for the community, then it would stay. If it shows a negative effect, it would, it would go away. Yes, yeah, to answer, I mean, unfortunately, a traffic study is five thousand dollars. We're just, you know. Oh, okay. You know, it's. <clears throat> I mean, again, if it, if we have no choice, then we have no choice. Just like if we had no choice on building the road, nobody wants to build a road. Nobody wants to do a traffic study. Uh, you know, the Eliases just want to build themselves a, a a new home, and basically, my job is to do whatever I can do to, to get you folks to approve it to yeah. allow them to do that. So. We prefer not to have to do a traffic study, but if that would, uh... I, I, I don't think a traffic study will help, and it is uh, to me a waste of five thousand dollars. And I, I like Farida's suggestion. I don't know what the planning department thinks. If you know, one way would, would <clears throat> at least help or improve or. I think we would need to take it to the city engineer and yeah. explore it. Um, I think it would be okay to um, uh, approve this plan conditional on that conversation with the city engineer. And um, we, of course, always have another bite at this um, in three months when it comes back to us for uh, definitive approval. <clears throat> That sounds sounds fair. Any other questions before we open this up to public? Is this open? Uh, ma yes, Madam it Chair, it's uh, Jack Valley again, uh, if I may. Sure. Um, for the one way, uh, the one way would have to be approved by the traffic commission. Um, I was on the traffic commission for several years. The traffic commission uh, typically prefers to see uh, on whatever road that they would be making a one way uh, they ask for uh, unanimous support from the residents of the street just because they're the ones who, who would have to live on it um, I, I don't know if if uh, unanimous support is is feasible uh, in this particular case um you know I, I just want to put that out just for the the future discussion of it oh, that's good good to know i wasn't aware of that um and so 
what the residents could be faced with is a unanimous decision for a one-way or a two-way being a condition on the next go-around. Well, we'll we'll have uh, we'll have some people out at the zoning board, um, and and then hopefully we'll uh, we'll bring them back around. You know, when this when this comes back in front of the board, um, off the a question for for Mr. Faria, if he's all right uh, with it uh, through the chair, how much would the road cost? Would, would you have a ballpark off the top of your head? Don't the I, I really don't. I guess the simple answer would be it would depend on what the city engineer and the planning department wants us to build if it's a 24 foot road similar to what's out there now with no curbing, no sidewalks, no granite, uh, you know, then that's, re you know, that's obviously a lot cheaper than a 32 foot wide paved way with granite curbing and sidewalks and, and things like that. So it, it's, uh, it's really tough to say counselor with, with any certainty until, until we get into it and know for sure, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's more than a hundred thousand dollars either way, uh, yeah. you know, under any method of construction. You know, no, it, I, I appreciate it. It's, yeah, it's because it, oh, the, the Eliases are, are my constituents as well. You know, I and, and the, the neighborhood has no problem with the house. So I'm just right. trying to. It, yeah, it starts that. to get it starts to get close to the point where it's not worth getting a house lot. If you're spending one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to get the house lot, it, it you know yeah. may not be worth it at that point. Uh, I, you know, that would certainly be for the Eliases to to speak to. But certainly any kind of roadway construction is a, a significant cost. Well, they are selling the front lot. Right. And 100,000 100, is way more than I thought that part of the road would cost, too. So that is putting a lot on the applicant. So I can see why Chief Williams is wishy-washy on this one. It's a tough, tough call. Um, Ms. Robert, is this like a requirement or something we need to ask it on our um, during our meeting on Monday with the city attorney? Uh, we can bring this up. Um, we have required other um, small subdivisions like this to continue roads through, um, even for, you know, two house, uh, if you remember at um, uh, Stonehill Way or Stonehill Drive, uh, we made them put the road through. Um, but uh, we can ask about it at our, at our Wednesday meeting. Okay, so we'll um need to make this some type of a condition that doesn't allows us to reconvene on this how do we go about that table it uh no i wouldn't table it i would um uh, accept it conditionally with a, oh, I'm sorry, you can't see air quotes, with a road pending discussion with um, uh, the city engineer and um, and the planning department. And the city attorney. And the city attorney, yeah. So if there is to be a motion, it would be with the three conditions, pending discussion with the city engineer, the city attorney, and the planning department. Yeah. Okay. Now, is this open to public? Yes, Comment. it is. All right. So if anybody here from the public would like to speak, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen, and we will unlock your microphone. If you are calling in, please press star nine. And I do not have anyone with their hand up. All right, is there a motion, please? Motion to approve with the conditions that this will be view reviewed by the city engineer, city legal department in, in planning. I think I got that right. Okay. Uh, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Rita Das? 
Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. All right. Thank you. I think that. Thanks for your, your help, folks. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and Madam Chair, before Thank we you, adjourn, board members. Um, I do want to remind the public and other board members that our um, November planning board date is the 22nd, Tuesday, the 22nd. That is a very odd date for um, the planning board, but uh, we are posting it on the web now uh, to make sure that everyone has uh, notice. Thank you. And I just want to close the meeting by saying it was very refreshing to see a lot of um, projects here that are restoring some eyesores throughout the city. And it was a really, really good meeting. I, I said that. Thank you all. I third it. <laughs> all right. Have a good evening, everyone. Good well, night. Motion to adjourn. Second. Adjourn. Thank you, everybody. All in favor. Thanks, Aye. All in favor. Uh, James Sweeney. Aye. <laughs> Larry, Larry Hassan. Aye. Uh, I see it. Aye. Yes. Carita. Yes. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Thanks for all your work, guys.